how old is this plant? When when was this done? Seven eleven twenty four. So this is a two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks old, and it was just a small node before. Yep. And then you would. <clears throat> this is shoots, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So this is just no roots, just growing the plant in here. Correct. The goal is to get as many nodes as possible. Okay, and then you would. How big was it when you put it in there? Tiny. It was just a little piece, right? Yeah. Okay. So in two weeks, it's grown quite a bit. Yep. Um, and then I can see a node right here. So we would take that node mm-hmm. and we could put that in roots. Yeah. So there's two approaches. You can put it in roots and transition it, or you can take some of those nodes and continue to run them in multiplication. In, in more shoots. Correct. And then they would grow like this. Correct. Generating more shoots, getting more clones. It all, it, it all comes down to what your goal is, right? So the, the primary purposes for tissue culture within cannabis, I'd say, number one, are the regeneration of mother stock. We're seeing some growers have mothers around way too long, and some of those plants don't have the same THC or terpene levels, and they're just not as healthy as they, as they can be. So being able to regenerate them from, you know, let's say it's eight, nine months, you can bring it back to a, you can bring it back to a one-year-old. Think of Benjamin Button, but reverse. <laughs> um, the other is using tissue culture to remediate these plants. So a lot of the issues that we're seeing in cannabis today are because a lot of those plants are infected with something and growers are starting to use tools and testing them out, but it hasn't really been widely adopted. So, you know, if you could increase your, your, your yields by 20, 30%, I'd say that's pretty valuable. Um, and it all comes down to testing and growing healthy crop. Yeah. And, and I think there's, I, I remember talking to Bruce Bugby about this and, um, something interesting that he really said that stuck with me is like, we all know what HLV is. We all know what, you know, these different viruses are, mm-hmm. but he goes, there's a lot more that we don't know. Mm-hmm. And, and this, this clears it out. Yeah. The, the don't know. Yep. I mean, your business is, you know, this is the foundation of your business. This is the solution to a, a very large problem. And, and the thing is, it's, it's not just with cannabis. We're seeing, um, uh, lettuce sclerosis virus, we're seeing um, tobacco mosaic virus. So all these viruses can cross to different species. So, you know, what affects cannabis can also affect other industries. So, you know, all the technology and knowledge and R&D that we're investing in tissue culture will benefit us just as, as a population, as the earth, so that we have solutions to these problems. We want to avoid potato famines and <clears throat> we want to avoid hops latent viroid infecting more crops. Are you familiar with the Cavendish uh, banana issue in the fungus? I forget the name of it. uh, Relatively, yes. So I think they're, they use tissue culture because all bananas are, that's why we get the nice yellow banana, right? It's all the same. Mm -hmm. And they're using tissue culture for that. Mm -hmm. But then they've got this fungus that's wiping it out. And there's concern that that banana species will be gone in a decade or something. Mm -hmm. Um, How come they can't solve it? It's a great question. (laughs) Well, if I, uh, if I knew that I might win the Nobel prize, yeah, okay. but, um, <laughs> we're what, not there yet. I, I think one challenge that we have, at least with banana propagation is we're, we're mass producing the same varieties and that same variety might be susceptible to the same fungus or that's the same the disease. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. So, um, whether or not you agree with it, you know, CRISPR and, and genetically modifying some of these crops is one way that growers have been able to solve certain issues, right? Developing plants and trees that are resistant to higher temperatures that are resistant to certain fungus. You have, um, fusarium resistant plants. So being able to identify some of those risks and, uh, create certain strains or species that can be resistant, I think is one approach. Another is, you know, given that the banana is suffering a lot of potential diseases and, and fungal contamination, having backups in tissue culture is really what saves us because while we have, you know, hundreds of millions of bananas planted in fields, we still have those genetics backed up in a lab. So in the worst case scenario, if something were to happen to a majority of those banana crops, we would be able to grow them again. We would just have to learn how to adapt. And whether that's growing indoors or adapting a nursery or a greenhouse away from those um, contaminated zones, if you will, that tissue culture gives us, that's, gives us a solution or gives us a way to avoid the catastrophe of losing bananas forever. And I, I think the same goes for cannabis. Like right now, 
the data is, you know, 70 to 90% of growers have hops latent viroid. I mean, it's, it's, it's a cancer right now. And I don't think if we don't solve it, right. If we don't clean up a lot of these crops, we're not going to see these genetics exist in the next five, 10 years, or they won't exist in the way that we know them. Right. Hops latent viroid can decrease your THC levels, 10, 20, 30%. Um, your, your, your terpene percentages will drop drastically and then your plant will also just die. So what we're trying to do, and I think what Athena's doing a great job with their tissue culture kit is introduce the masses to tissue culture, bring more brains, more people in, get them excited about the potential. And also, you know, more people just means more research. And so getting more people educated in the space and trained in the space gives us the opportunity to combat some of these issues. And obsolete and viroid is just one, you know, there's going to keep, we're going to, they're going to more and more viruses and viroids are going to keep coming, but we just need to know how to clean them up. And, and that's where, you know, meristem, you know, apical meristem dissection is one solution. Nodal propagation is another solution where we're starting to develop more and more protocols around uh, cleaning procedures.